good morning everyone and on behalf of icici securities i welcome you all to jupiter life science hospital limited q3 and 9 month fi24 earnings conference call today on the call we have with us and dr ankit thakkar executive director and ceo mr anand akte chief strategy officer and other members of the senior management team we will begin with the call with opening remarks from dr ankit and post that uh, we'll have a q and a session So now I have hand over the call to Dr. Ankit for his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul. Good morning, everybody. So I thank you all for joining us on our earnings call uh, to discuss the business and financial performance of third quarter and nine months of FY24. I hope you had a chance to see the financial results and the presentation on the website and the stock exchanges. Uh, With me on the call today is Mr. Anand Lapte, our uh, Chief of Business and Strategy. Uh, I am also accompanied by uh, Falguni Shah, our Business Controller, and uh, Suma Uparathi, our uh, Compliance Officer and Company Secretary, and of course our IR team uh, represented by SGA. Throughout our journey, we prioritize a patient-centric approach. and uh, we have always had the aim of delivering high quality medical services and a hospitable experience to the patients and their families this commitment has not only garnered greater trust from our patients but also our doctors and the entire team which has primarily contributed to our year on year growth in performance we continue to remain optimistic about the tremendous scope of expansion for quality health services in india and especially in western indian region with the growing aspiration of the average indian consumer the rising middle class and the increased penetration of the health insurance more and more people are demanding a higher quality and a better experience in their health journey jupiter's brand and offering has therefore become more relevant in these times we are committed to our green field hub focused growth strategy in western india but shall also continue to evaluate suitable growth opportunities for the company as they present themselves from time to time As you know from our previous communications we are in the process of establishing a new 500 bed quaternary care hospital in Dombivali in the Mumbai metropolitan region uh, which will be uh, constructed over 600000 square feet the construction is uh, currently in full swing and working as per our uh, scheduled time as the stated objective of the IPO uh, we mentioned last time we have repaid all our debt obligations and we have now got a uh, annualized finance saving of over 40 crores in the previous quarter we also completed empanelment with the insurance companies in indore and consequently our occupancy has increased uh, from 51.2% in the last quarter to 56.2% in q3 fy24 the contract renegotiations with insurance companies at the pune hospital is also concluded and uh, it has been one of the factors which has helped to increase the arpovs from 49 or 1000 in q2 24 to 53400 uh, in q3 fy24 specific uh, numbers for the current period in q3 our total income stood at 273.6 crores Uh, which is an increase of 19.8% uh, YOY the ebitda for the quarter stood at 62.9 crores that is an increase of 39.2% YOY the margin uh, representing 23% the pat for the quarter was 43.7 crore representing a pat margin of 16% for the 9 month period the total income has been 782.1 crore uh, 19.8% growth uh the ebitda for 9 months is 178.9 crores that is a 17.6% uh, increase yoy and the ebitda margin is 22.9% the pat for 9 months is 131.3 the average occupancy uh, for these 9 months has been 63.2% as compared to 60.6% uh, in the previous year uh, same period Our top for nine months FY24 is fifty three thousand five eighty five, and the A loss is three point nine two for these nine months. So that is a quick summary. Uh, you have probably seen this. Uh, we can use this time better to talk and 
uh, answer your questions. So the floor is open. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Ashay Jain from Jain Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. I uh, have a couple of questions. Uh, so firstly, uh, uh, so we've always focused on the latest technology and uh, the instruments or uh, equipments uh, which have very high AMC packages. Uh, so uh, how much do we spend uh, yearly uh, as a whole new instrument or, 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 or you may say what would be the maintenance capex? So, uh, yes, we have focused on, uh, you know, buying the appropriate technology for uh, uh, for helping us provide uh, the quality of care that we would like to. Uh, in terms of uh, annual capex, it is hard to answer because uh, you are, you know, in the stage of various new developments from time to time. So, in the year of new hospital, it is big. In the year of launching a new department within a hospital, it comes up. Suddenly, if there is nothing happening in the year and just the AMC, then the number does not look big. AMC for different equipment uh, would range uh, between 5 and 10% of the uh, capital cost of procurement. Hello, Mr. Ashen. As Mr. Ashen has left the queue, I would like to take the next question. The next question is from the line of Sagar Deha. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, I have two questions. One is, have you identified any other expansion opportunities apart from the Dombivli Hospital? Hi, Sagar. So, we are evaluating a few opportunities in Maharashtra currently. Uh, a couple are in uh, serious stages of discussion, but I don't have anything concrete to announce today, uh, which means nothing is signed, sealed and delivered. But we are looking at some opportunities in Maharashtra as we speak. Okay, understood. Thank you. And also, uh, I wanted to understand at what extent can the bed capacity be expanded in Pune and Indore hospitals? And by what timeline can we achieve this? So, Pune, uh, uh, there is just, I mean, the capex for expansion is over. We just have to activate the last 30 beds, uh, which we can do in Pune. Uh, currently, as probably if you look at this quarter, the Pune occupancy is something like uh, mid 60%. So maybe uh, in some time in the coming financial year, we'll activate the last uh, balance capacity of Pune, and that would be the end of uh, you know new bed capacity for the Pune hospital. Uh, for Indore, uh, we have close to 200 bed growth opportunity possible. This quarter, we have shown an occupancy of. Uh, Again, mid 50% and 56.2, uh, I think, is the number for this quarter. Uh, previous communications, I said that usually when we are between 60 and 65%, we think of adding new beds. So I anticipate that milestone to be achieved uh, quite soon, and we should be thinking of adding new beds in indoors. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rohit Mehra from SK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, my first question is, uh, which are the key therapies that you are focused on at your hospital? Which are the what, sorry? 
key therapies key therapy okay yeah. so there is no key therapy that we focus on uh, we have always maintained that we would like to have comprehensive uh, service offerings which means uh, we focus on everything beginning from childbirth and newborn care uh, we do uh, oncology also we do cardiology organ transplants all of it so there is no key therapy area because we uh, believe that healthcare has to be treated as a whole and uh, we need to excel in all the branches of medicine to do justice to our patients so we don't have a key focus area our decision is that we should have a, a comprehensive offering yeah that's good and uh, my second question is is cash realization different compared to the insurance and why is government payment such a low number so government such a low number is by choice uh, we uh, don't have impanelment with uh, government schemes uh, in the communities where we are present there is significantly high uh, insurance penetration so most of our patients come uh, with uh, a health insurance either one which they have bought on their own or which is provided by their employer so that is what forms a bulk of our payer mix and the balance pay out of pocket so because we don't have any government obligations that is we we have not taken any free land or any subsidy or any uh, undue favors from the government for that reason uh, we are not even compelled to uh, you know do those schemes yeah got it got it thank you for your uh, detailed answer uh, that's it from my side thank you thank you very good day thank you A reminder to all the participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ashay Jain from Jain Capital. Please go ahead. Oh yeah hi sorry my call got disconnected earlier. So uh, yeah I had one more question. Uh and our Thane hospital is a uh, uh, quite mature uh, one. So we can make, uh we can only expect uh, inflation or some price hike uh, led growth. however in in the pune and indore location the hospitals can grow faster in order to have better growth so uh, do we see adding bed capacity at a rapid pace over there yeah so you already answered a part of my question in your question so uh, your analysis is correct and i agree with that uh, in pune uh, i just answered the previous question where i said we just have another 30 beds left to be commissioned which are in a semi ready state uh, hopefully in the next year we should start those and then that is the end of capacity expansion for pune in the also we think in the next year we should uh, be adding beds because we will reach that 60 plus percent occupancy is what we believe so uh, that is where we are on bed expansion Oh, okay understood and apart from that uh, what is the overall uh, expansion plan or uh, uh, say five years uh, within five years or five years down our stated now. objective is to go to 2500 odd beds uh, in the next five years with a greenfield strategy that is the kind of key focus and that is the direction to which we are working in the meanwhile if some interesting uh, opportunity does present itself on the mna side we will evaluate it uh, as it comes okay understood yeah that's all from my side thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Nishi Shah from Aditya Villa Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have couple of questions. Uh, first is building a new hall. Stamping up them requires a good amount of time. So why don't we aggressively plan for the inorganic acquisition? So we prefer uh, the organic acquisition for a few reasons. One is. Uh, control that means it helps us decide exactly where we want to be located it helps us decide the size scale scope and design of the infrastructure it helps us decide what kind of technology to buy it allows us to set our own culture from uh, the word go rather than inheriting something so 
the degree of autonomy in a green field is much much higher and we don't look at this business or this uh, uh, hospitals as a you know short horizon quick turn around quick exit kind of a story we think of living in those buildings uh, for life and for that reason we believe that the first two or three years invested in doing it right help us uh, reap the reward in the future for a very long time to come so that is uh, uh, a key reason uh, then also on the uh, capital side a, a great asset uh, available for acquisition uh, with everything that you like including financial metrics and locations and in assets uh, generally does not come uh, at the cost at which you will be able to build yourself it generally comes with a huge premium associated to it uh, in our assessment uh, those kind of premiums uh, are not something that we are looking to pay uh, which is why previously i said that uh, we do evaluate opportunities from time to time we uh, found indore as a great opportunity for acquisition and we uh, did that Uh, so if again some good opportunity does present itself we are absolutely for it but in our assessment they are few and far between so that is why i don't call it my strategy uh, but we are we are open to it okay okay that answers my question and i have one more question uh, what would be the key drivers for ebitda growth in fy25 so ebitda growth uh, uh thane uh, will again as discussed earlier will be predominantly uh, rising inflation etc related growth pune uh, there will be a combination of rising and occupancy led growth and indoor will have the third factor as well that is rising occupancy and uh, improved case mix because uh, it is just about getting mature but i wouldn't say it is a fully matured hospital so in terms of complexity of case mix uh, it has a little bit of catching up to do so that is the third driver for uh, in loss okay okay that answers all my questions thank you so much for the opportunity thank you nishi good day yeah yeah thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Ankit Shah from Canara Robaco AMC. Please go ahead. Hello, hi, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the uh, employee cost. So, if I look at the uh, uh, employee cost, they have risen like uh, 17% YY, and even on a Q1 Q2 basis, they're higher. So, any particular reason, uh, reason for this, and what would be the sustainable number going forward? Hi. So employee cost uh, in this quarter is higher. Traditionally, it has uh, been higher in Q3 because uh, in third quarter we generally uh, award the annual bonuses, and uh, the third quarter number is higher on account of those bonuses. So if you remove that bonus, the employee cost generally does not vary too much from quarter to quarter. It is generally flat throughout the year. Uh, the professional fee component sometimes does vary because that is dependent on the volume of work and the kind of work that the doctors do and it may sometimes vary with that but employee cost is largely flat q3 is higher on account of bonuses got it uh, uh, so th- this is expected to normalize uh, going forward yeah so whatever you saw in q2 i think again you should see in q4 uh, logically got it uh and my second question is related to uh, no, uh dombevali expansion so here how much capex has been incurred so far and for fy25 what is the number you are expecting so far we have finished uh, excavation uh and we have just started constructing so uh in terms of uh, number it is not a big number in the in fy25 we we would probably be spending about 100 crores uh on the don't be really fast got it uh, got it and uh, thirdly uh, so last quarter you had mentioned that <laughs> indoor hospital has uh, achieved a ebitda break even uh, 
uh, but at uh, precuners uh, still not achieved so can you give some sense when would uh, uh, indoor uh, uh, achieve optimal levels of uh, ebitda margins uh, because you know there you, you uh, highlighted some key levers for uh, uh, no uh, overall improvement over there so uh, when would that optimal uh, ebitda uh, margin be achieved in your view so i believe that uh, hospitals uh, greenfield in nature uh, take say you know in the year 4 to 6 that three years period uh, sometime they should reach a optimal ebitda margin so currently indoor is uh, probably third year so in the next year or two we believe it should be uh, in a comfortable position on the ebitda margin got it uh, yeah those were my questions sir thank you so much thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of ashay jain from jain capital please go ahead oh uh, yeah thanks thanks for the follow up uh, so a uh, couple of questions so uh, uh, probably in the tier 2 uh, cities like uh, in lore and pune how, uh, like uh, hunting for a good talent is uh, an issue or it is not and how how do you uh, safeguard or maintain the employee retention uh, levels at your end so both in lore and pune are quite prominent uh, cities today pune of course uh, uh, would probably rank higher than in lore in terms of its stature in the country uh, so pune has absolutely zero challenge uh, in lore also for i would say 90% of the uh, problems there are great doctors available locally for uh, some super specialized kind of work uh, in lord because it did not have great uh, you know infra on the healthcare side uh, it was not able to attract uh, doctors uh, the problem was not with the city the problem was with the with the offerings of uh, you know hospitals uh, now if whenever we have tried and uh, we have been successful in attracting talent uh, to the indoor hospital from other parts of the country as well so i don't i don't see that as a challenge for both the hospitals okay understood uh, uh one last bit uh, so uh, do you give out any esops uh, is there a structured uh, uh, policy or something for, for the same don't have a esop program currently okay understood yeah no uh, that's all thank you okay thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abdul Kader Puranwala from ICICI Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, Mr. Abdul. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Now you are audible. Yeah. So, hi. My first question is on the Thani Hospital. So, sir, uh, if you could explain, uh, you know, how the ramp up has happened in this particular quarter. and uh, while uh, you're seeing some margin improvement in indore and pune how has the margin profile of thani been versus it was last year so thani uh, is kind of in a I, i don't know i would say steady state nearing peak kind of a situation so uh, nothing much uh, has changed in thani in pune and indore both being growth phases uh, you know Occupancies are improving. Pune, we added beds last year. Indore is uh, getting established in the community, and for those reasons, we are seeing increased occupancy in Indore and Pune. Uh, again, as I said, that uh, Pune also had a rate revision due from the insurance companies, which we did negotiate. Uh, that has also helped to improve the revenues and our pop profiles. So. those are some factors for the three hospitals okay okay and uh, so the balance 200 bids so uh, what uh, you may add it and or maybe next year so out of that uh, if you could you know uh, help us understand what would be the split in terms of the number of icu bids which could get added or the tertiary kit bids over there so we still have to uh, you know plan which way we will uh, you know what all we will add and how to do the offering uh, we have 
flexible space available. So it will definitely be mix of ICU also and uh, ward beds of different kinds, maybe some operation theater. Uh, so it will be a combination of all, but today I don't have an answer of exactly what that breakup will be. Okay. Okay, so, so I mean, uh, at uh, at uh, you know the 60, 68 percent kind of an occupancy, what indoor will reach? Uh, I uh, assume you know uh, you will reach at the optimum level of margins as well. So, so I mean, uh, directionally, if you have to see in terms of the ARPOB or you know what would be uh, uh, the growth drivers from there on? I mean, it could be only the new build situation, or there are certain specialties where you're not seeing a ramp up right now, and uh, you know. that you are currently working on yeah indoor will see both uh, occupancy and specialty drivers both so it is not that uh, you, know, you are not focusing on uh, uh, specialty but it is just a part of maturity of a hospital in a community as we have noticed uh, earlier than our understanding of the space that you may have for example a neurology department but you will not you know uh, if someone gets a stroke in the middle of the night in the f- first uh, year there may not be either a top of mind recall or uh, a confidence of the community in a new hospital so uh, establishing of medical teams establishing a route in the community uh, slowly you know growing volumes of all the branches slowly uh, attracting more and more the uh, tertiary care and quaternary care referrals so some of these things are a function of time uh, not necessarily the function of uh, focus uh, of course in some other places you like adding or specialty you know you don't start with heart transplant in the first 6 months of operation you you start and establish your cardiology or cardiac surgery or critical care and once all of that is established then you start start venturing into those things so some specialties do get added from uh, over a period of time and some are already there but they take a little time to mature got it sir. and a uh, final one if i may uh, so in the past you have spoken about uh, evaluating uh, certain acquisitions in the western region so so where are we on that i have have we you know uh, and and some initial talks for or evaluating any of those assets what we have liked i think really worth reporting right now uh, nothing that is uh, very exciting and on the table uh, but of course whenever there is uh, i will obviously reach out to everyone to inform you but currently nothing was informed all right sir. thank you and wish you all the best thank you thank you before we take the next question A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Nishi Shah from Aditya Birla Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, Miss Nishi. Hello. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, yes. yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, i believe we acquired hospital we have 96% so do we intend to take balance as well uh so the balance uh, small 2 3% is uh, with the local doctor there who was part of the uh, group uh, from the beginning and currently he has a desire to hold on to his equity uh, so uh, that is where it stands Okay okay thank you that answers my question yeah. Thank you A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask the question The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from GM Financial please go ahead uh, Hi thank you so much for the opportunity so I could I just have one question So recently, there have been news flows. I'm not sure uh, whether it's, uh, the regulations are applicable, but the news flow is that the uh, uh, healthcare insurance customers basically they can encash or use the cashless facility at any of the hospitals. Now, since we have such a huge share uh, of insurance uh, in our payer mix, so just wanted to understand: Does this uh, impact us, uh, say, from a medium to long-term perspective in any way? 
just wanted to know your thoughts on this thank you yeah hi chintan so i don't see how it affects us in short to medium term uh, at all because i mean we already have empanelment with all the uh, insurance companies so nothing much should change there in the long term i think it is good because it makes insurance as a product more attractive to the community and i think if this uh, does get implemented eventually and reduces the hurdles for you know claiming your insurance then i think uh, more and more people would uh, choose to get insured so in the long term uh, it is favorable short to medium term it does not make any difference in my view and uh, yeah so 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 got it understood so from an industry perspective it's good but now say for hospitals when we have this partnership in place so uh, and we have a certain payout structure so how does that get uh, impacted say from a longer perspective or there's no impact how should we see this i did not understand your question payout structure meaning no so uh, basically we have a, a partners that we would have partnered with a lot of insurance companies so now when you know customers have the option uh, etc to go to any sort of hospital so how does this partnership basically get uh, impacted no so i don't think people are coming to us because the hospital of their choice is not accepting a health insurance so i think that premise is probably slightly flawed because uh, mm-hmm. generally uh, any hospital even of medium forget large size should have some kind of insurance tie ups you know uh, it is generally the smaller ones uh, which don't have tie up so i don't think that uh, now because they are allowed to go you know to some of those smaller hospitals as well that is why they will choose to go there and they'll uh, stop uh, using jupiter as their provider so I really don't think that has uh, any role to play. Okay, got it. Understood. That was really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sanketa Kohli from Prabhu Das Lila Dar. Please go ahead. Hello ma. Hello. You're sounding a little low ma. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you but you're very very soft. That's okay. Now can you hear me? Yeah, we can make do go ahead. Oh uh, yes. So, uh, I have one question regarding our port. Uh, how should we see our port across the unit going forward now that we have taken the Pune insurance rate revision contract negotiation has been done oh, i'm sorry i could just partially hear that how do we see our cop growing across all the units was that the question? can you please move closer to your device or speak louder hello yes it's regarding our cop across the units going forward Yeah, so I just uh, said a couple of minutes back that uh, the airport driver in Thane will be inflation, in Pune will be inflation and occupancy, and in Indore will be inflation, occupancy and case mix. Oh, okay. Thank you. The next question. is from the line of Janil Shah from JM Financial please go ahead hi good morning and congratulations on a good set of numbers just a bookkeeping question uh, our employee costs have risen uh, you know almost 16% quarter on quarter so is this largely uh, related to indoor hospital or pune petitions and have we completed uh, our doctor hires or, or you know our uh, employee additions Yeah, Daniel. So this is related to the annual bonuses which we pay in third quarter. Uh, that is the added component on uh, this quarter's numbers for employee cost. In the next quarter, again, it will be similar to what you saw in Q2. Okay. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question.
as there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vilain. Thank you, everyone, to join us for this call today. I hope the answers were satisfactory. If you need any more questions, feel free to reach out to us or uh, to the SDA team, and uh, they will get in touch with us for appropriate responses. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and a great week ahead. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.